But they never seen it, so they're not giving me the opportunity. It's over! Jay Nady stops the fight. That's amazing. There's no sense of fussing and arguing. You shouldn't have got caught with the punch. So just shut up. <laughs> After 16 years and 38 knockouts of his own, for the first time in his professional career, Jones found himself in the unfamiliar position of knockout victim. All those years, you like, what? I don't want to get caught with a shot that you don't see coming, but I saw it this time coming, and I knew it was going to happen. So nothing I really could do about it. The only other time Roy Jones had been knocked down was against Lou Duvall in 1998. So how has Jones reacted to this much more devastating trip to the mat? He looks at everything in a work atmosphere now. When I trained, started training Roy years ago, he said, I don't want it to be like work. But uh, at this stage, I personally see and feel that it's work for him. Like I tell people, any dog can fight off the top, but how many dogs can fight off the bottom? Most of them quit, not I, said the lion. Tonight, Jones returns to the ring for another light heavyweight title shot. But this future Hall of Famer is trying to reclaim something much bigger. You gotta remember one thing about me. When they say pound for pound the best, we talking about pound for pound from the inside of my heart all the way out to the best of my boxing skills. Do I get mad because somebody finally got lucky? No, I am human, and I understand that. But somebody finally get lucky one day. And that ain't happening no more. Emmanuel Stewart, uh, what do you expect Roy Jones to do now, coming back off of that knockout against Glenn Johnson? Will he go in and try to score a spectacular knockout to erase the memory somewhat, or will he be more cautious than ever before? I personally myself, Jim, don't think he can be cautious. After not taking a rematch with Tava, much of the boxing public felt that he's, you know, been a gun shy. And as a result of that, taking a fight with a guy who the general public doesn't know anything about, he has got to be very impressive in this fight tonight. And he has a difficult job because he's fighting a guy in Glenn Coffey Johnson, who's a very, very good, solid fighter. And I think that Roy is going to have to take some risks a little bit more than he normally does in order to be spectacular tonight. But he needs a very impressive victory tonight. Great point. He is not fighting his third fight against Antonio Tarver. And to that, Roy Jones would say, not yet. But in order to go back in against Tarver, Larry Merchant, he's got to be the old RJ. And if he's not the old RJ, if he's only a fraction of the old RJ, is Glenn Johnson a threat to beat him? Johnson is a tough guy, but he's made to order for the old Roy Jones. But if Roy Jones is an old Roy Jones, this is not the guy he necessarily wants to fight tonight. Johnson, who has lost a number of disputed decisions to better known fighters in their hometowns says this is just another fight he's expected to lose. Seven years ago, he lost to Bernard Hopkins for $15,000. Tonight, he's getting a million, which shows that if you hang in there, Jim, sometimes the miracle does happen. Indeed, the expectations are the same, but the money's getting a lot better. So let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Jamaican-born Miami resident Glenn Johnson against Roy Jones, who drove here from Pensacola after the hurricane disrupted his preparation for the fight. They're both 35. They're both 5 feet 11. But look at the 3-inch arm length advantage for Johnson from the armpit to the end of the fist. Wonder how that might show up in the fight. Johnson weighed in one pound under the limit. Jones right on it. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Roy Jones Jr. Glenn Johnson fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. The case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell at any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And here comes Roy Jones on his way into the ring, wearing around his neck the gold medal that American Andre Ward won in Athens, Greece. Jones, of course, still waiting for a gold medal from the International Olympic Committee to commemorate his outstanding boxer performance at the Seoul Olympic Games in 1988. Jim, Roy lost a beach house in the hurricane that hit Pensacola. A dozen of the Gamecocks, the hundreds of Gamecocks he raised, got free and killed each other. 
That's what they're bred to do. A few years ago, when a hurricane hit, 50 of his Gamecocks got free and killed each other. Roy Jones, too, was bred to fight. And he has the privilege of wearing Andre Ward's gold medal because Ward has signed a management contract with James Prince, who also has a management contract with Roy. In Roy Jones' mind, his coming back now is the equivalent of Elvis coming back to Memphis. Elvis would have to come from a bigger <laughs> knockout. Now here is Glenn Johnson. Eight wins, nine losses, two draws since his 11th round knockout lost Bernard Hopkins in 1997. But of those nine losses, Johnson would say at least five of them were incorrect decisions, usually rendered against him in the opponent's hometown. Yeah, when he got a draw against Clinton Woods, the promoter of Clinton Woods picked up some extra expenses for Johnson, telling him a champion shouldn't have to pay those expenses, acknowledging that he has indeed won the fight. And that was in Woods' hometown of Sheffield, England. The draw took place November of last year. Woods went back there in February of this year, or excuse me, Johnson went back there in February of this year to fight Woods in his hometown a second time, and this time got the unanimous decision victory, which has given him the title belt that he brings into the ring tonight. Moved from Jamaica to Miami when he was nine years old. He says of his continuing Jamaican accent, I still have it because I don't want to lose it. I love America, I'm an American citizen, but I was born a Jamaican and I'll always be a Jamaican. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer to get things started for us. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the FedEx Forum here in one of the great cities in the South, Memphis, Tennessee. Where tonight, Square Ring Incorporated is proud to present 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Goose and Tudor Promotions, Prize Fight Boxing, Grand Casino Tunica, and Roy Jones Jr. presents Body Head Bangers. Sanctioned by the Tennessee Boxing Commission Administrator Dan Kelly. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Gerald Deming, Dan McClellan, and Fred Steinwinder. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Bill Clancy. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing navy blue, official weight, 175 pounds. Professional record, 49 victories, including 38 knockouts with only two defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger from Pensacola, Florida, the former middleweight, former super middleweight, former three-time light heavyweight, and former heavyweight champion of the world, And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, official weight, 174 pounds. Professional record, 40 victories, including 27 knockouts, with nine defeats and two bouts even. From Miami, Florida, presenting the reigning Defending IBF Light Heavyweight Champion of the World, 
Glenn, the Road Warrior Johnson. If this rides up, coach, at the top, it's going to be all right, okay? Right where it is is good. Right there, Glenn. All right, gentlemen, we're with the rules of the line. Fight for the IBF, fight for the weight championship of the world. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times and make sure you obey my commands. Any questions here? Questions here. Touch gloves. Good luck. Good work. Roy Jones came back from his disappointment in the Olympics to win championships. He came back from being disqualified against Montel Griffin. Now he's being asked to start a comeback from a knockout. And Larry, I think he's gonna be successful too. I'm really impressed also with this tremendous crowd that he's got here. It still shows that he still is a superstar. Arena holds 15,800 for boxing. We're told that more than 14,000 tickets were sold. The place looks close to full as Glenn Johnson attacks Roy Jones and tries to get him to remember what it was like to be rocked and knocked out by Antonio Tarver. And Jones smiling, but basically just trying to roll away from the punishment as Johnson attacks and attacks. I think this is very amateurish and immature for Johnson to fight like this in the beginning with all the experience he's had. He's not landing anything effectively. Even the punches that looks like he's landing, Roy's leaning and using the ropes to take the strength out of the punches. And it's clear that Jones expected it. But on the other hand, Jones is not responding yet by picking Johnson off with counter shots, although now he begins to as he rocks off the ropes with lefts and rights. And, and, and Johnson is not a big devastating punch anyway. But he did land a right hand flush on Jones's chin, and now he lands another right hand on the top of the head. And burning up a lot of in energy and ineffectively. And landing a left hook and demonstrating that he's not a devastating puncher, as Jones so far hasn't responded as if to show damage to any of these big power punches. It may be amateurs, but it sure is effective so far. Remember that in their first fight, Tarver had Jones on the ropes most of the night. Yeah, but the way that Johnson is going, he's going at an unbelievable pace. Right. To Land, but he's also landing some body punches. He may not be yeah. expecting to fight 12 rounds either. But body punches, when a guy's pulling his body back in upright position, you don't really hurt him that much when he's leaning back. Jones has landed some carefully selected counter shots, and now he backs Johnson up with one of them, and Glenn comes right back and tries to hammer Jones with another right hand over the top. Roy rolling forward to get away from those arcing overhand punches and now pounds Johnson with a big left hand in the stomach. <laughs> Roy has landed some really heavy shots to the stomach. He might lose this round, but, but uh, in the long term, that's not going to do Johnson any good either. No, he may lose the round, but I think it, it's, the round is going to his advantage going down the stretch because of the extremely big amount of energy that but Johnson some, but, some, but sometimes you don't get to the stretch if you hit a guy enough. No, but I just don't see Johnson is not that big a puncher, and you can really see every punch coming. And, and Roy, Roy is rolling out and riding each punch as it comes, punch by punch. Wait, no punch, no punch, I'm here, I'm here. Step back. Finally, they move away from the ropes, and Jones begins backing back toward the ropes. But round one is coming to a close. Most of the round taken up by Glenn Johnson's opening assault against Roy Jones. He threw the wall. Yeah, he, 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 threw, the wall. he threw the wall. Yeah. Watch when you're putting that stuff up there when I'm getting the mouthpiece on. Don't rush. Don't okay. rush. Take your time. Okay, you good good defense on the inside. Good defense on the inside. Keep working on the body, okay? Keep working on the body. Look, when he's, he's trying to land the left hook. He's trying to land the left hook to the body and watch the, the uppercuts. All right? But you got it, baby. You're cool. Take a shot. Here, let's go. Let me get a glove. 
Nice and relaxed, G. You got to work nice, baby. We got this. Listen to me. Listen to me. Look at me. We got this. Think smart, all right? Work smart, baby. Johnson has never been in a major event like this, especially in the U.S., but he has fought a number of times abroad before big crowds. Johnson in round one through 84 punches by copy box count. Jones measuring his response through only 31. Johnson landing twice as many, 22 to 11. Now let's see if the opening assault redounds to Jones's advantage because of all the energy Johnson has expended. I like the way that Johnson is looking here a lot better. He's putting pressure on Roy, fighting Roy at a closer range than Roy is comfortable at, and still not overexpending his punches too much. And if he can continue this on, now he has a good pattern that he's fighting at right now and a good style and rhythm. He's, he's trying to make this a power punching contest with Jones rather than allowing Jones to use his hand speed to advantage, which is how he has won most of his fights. Yeah, I, I agree, but the first round, I think, was a little excessive. I thought it was just too many punches when Roy was rolling back and taking the steam out of the punches. He's fighting it to me at a good, good pattern, pattern and a good get speed out. right here. But maybe the lesson in the post Tarver Jones world is that no opponent is ever going to treat Roy Jones with quite as much respect again as was the case prior to that first fight with Tarver. Absolutely. In fact, the more that you cut down that distance where he have, doesn't have that chance to do that little counter punching, the more difficult it is for Roy to be effective. Most fighters we've seen who have attempted to be aggressive early in the fight against Jones would soon find themselves getting beaten to the punch and would back off. That would be the test for Johnson. But so far, Johnson's fighting a very good style this round here. Getting in a left to the body, missing with the wide swinging right hand. But again, it's Johnson with all the activity, and Jones is just dodging, looking, occasionally picking a spot to counter. Another thing to consider here is that Johnson, although he has the title, has come here with the attitude of an underdog who feels he has to win decisively to get a decision. Jones seems mostly concerned in these first couple of rounds with not expending too much energy against Johnson's early assault. And now Jones begins to take over the the impetus of the trading situation. And what's been interesting, even though Roy has tried his flashy shots here and there, he has not been that effective himself in hitting Johnson clean as he probably would like. You see Johnson's defensive position. He holds his right hand high and close to his chin. Both gloves go up as Jones approaches. Jones manages to get in a little left hook pop to the chin. Oh, give me a break, give me a break, Quinn. Let him out, let him out. But more than anything, if Johnson gives you something, it's the body. That's a very good clean right hand lead. Now Roy's starting to get his rhythm now. Pick him up, Roy. Get your punches up, son. Glenn Johnson landed a couple on Jones' trunks. Not hard shots. Referee Bill Stanley or Bill Clancy said keep him up. Two rounds in the books of a scheduled 12 in Memphis, Tennessee. Work, let me get you to work the jab a little bit more. Put that buck in the middle, y'all. Work your jab. Work your jab a little bit more. Change up on it, okay? Nice strong. Then throw the power shots, okay? Don't wait on your on your uh, counter so much. Just keep that windshield wiper going. This guy ain't got no snap on his stuff no more. A little bit on the hand. Here, come on, come on. Come on. Sure, give, sure. give, me, give me a lot of fights now. Mm -hmm. You land that right hand, come back with the hook, okay? No. Punch him in his, in his left, right arm, any way you can on the body. Shoot, shoot the right hand low, shoot that right hand low, all right? Do not load up like that again. Don't load up like that, don't show them. Stay tight and right. Let's go, get up. Trainer Orlando Cuellar telling Glenn Johnson don't load up anymore and don't showboat. Obviously, Johnson, in his view, has done enough in the first couple of rounds to make the impression he wanted to make and now needs to go back into his envelope. Cuellar has been with Johnson for about three fights since Johnson decided that if he's not going to get the decision in close fights, he has to become more aggressive to try to take the fights and not hope to get them. Now Jones is choosing to counter virtually every Johnson shot. Ducks a couple of them there. But the counters were working perfectly for the first several seconds of the round. Oh, 
Bruce. appears to be doing more damage on the inside. Yeah, much more short, effective, well-placed punches. And it becomes clear that at least until Glenn Johnson runs out of gas, this is the fight we're going to see. Yes, and it's not really a comfortable fight for Roy, even though it looks good for Roy, maybe going down the stretch, but from this point on, from what I can see, Johnson has given Roy a much rougher fight than he expected. Well, anybody who saw the first Tarver fight might say to himself reasonably, I want to take him to the ropes, and I want to pressure him all night long. He didn't like it against Tarver. He had a controversial fight the first fight, being in the ropes, and was knocked out in the second fight in the ropes. Jones beginning to do significant damage with counter shots particularly to the body and now the crowd begins to warm to the task as Roy Jones puts together punches in combination and Johnson is coming right back at him which I'm quite sure Roy is a little surprised at. I'm lying on myself Johnson cracking Jones with the right hand Jones comes back with the right of his own. Ten seconds. Keep him up, boy. Keep him up. Jones is so accurate with his pinpoint punches that even though he's getting bombarded with wide punches, he's more effective with short punches through the middle. Jones has never been a power puncher as a light heavyweight. He's been more of a doubles and triples hitter than a home run hitter, but he has beaten some fighters down in the late rounds with these kinds of stiff punches. Copy box numbers in round three. Jones opened up on offense for the first time. 22 out of 52 power shots landed. Harold, how do you have it scored through three? Okay, Jim. 29-28, two rounds to one. Glenn Johnson. Jim, I gotta tell you something. The greatness of Roy Jones Jr. was always that when you rushed him, when you threw a punch at him, he wasn't there. He'd crack you with a left hook and he'd move. He'd spin and get the hell out of there. In this fight, Johnson could get him just like out, that. Man. Jones is right in front of him. Uh, in the third round, they thought Roy was more elusive. He he won that on good defense, but so far, it's Glenn Johnson on effective aggressiveness. Is Harold right, uh, Emmanuel? Does does Jones, in your view, not have the legs that he had as recently as two, three years ago? Well, he's not using them, and I agree with Harold 100%. At this stage here, Johnson is fighting a perfect break fight. Break it clean, step back, I think he expanded too much the first round, but beyond that, he's keeping pressure on Roy. He's making Roy fight sometimes when he doesn't want to fight, and he's been able to take the punches that Roy is hitting with and always to come right back. Maybe what Johnson wanted to accomplish in round one was to put Jones back into a defensive frame of mind, knowing that Jones might want to come in here and do something spectacular. Well, if that was his goal, he did succeed in doing that because Roy's whole mindset now is basically backing up, pot shotting every once in a while, and then for the most part trying to stay in the ropes and rest. Which is a great way to earn a 12-round decision, but not a great way to do something spectacular. That's right, and he needs a spectacular win.
left. Quick left hook for Jones. Landed as he backed up. Johnson shows no effects and jumps in with the right hand. And in the past, Roy has had great success with that same combination right there. It's called a check left hook where he pulls back and throws a hook as the opponent's coming in. But in this case here, it wasn't that effective. Johnson has a nice shot right here now. Had a great conversation oh, with uh, Glenn Johnson's promoter, Dan Goosen, moments before the start of the fight. And I said, uh, Dan, it would be nice to be able to go in and try to out-energy Jones, but your man is 35 years old also. And Dan said, yes. He may be the same age as Jones, but he's not as rich as Jones. So he's much, much hungrier. And he's fighting like that, too. Yeah, and he himself said to us, the million dollars wasn't it. I don't feel my com career is complete because I made a million dollar payday. All right, body work is good, Bob. Body work is good. Keep that left, keep that left side. Keep that left shoulder. Keep, keep, keep that left shoulder. Keep that left shoulder up. Now, but he's throwing it over here, right? Okay. Yes, okay. Like that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's what he is. Just keep it up. Just keep it up. Uh -huh. All right, Doc. On the answer, good. Can we maintain this pace? Yeah. If we can maintain this pace, we got this fight. That's what's going to take. Keep working the way you're working. Watch the uppercut. With Roy in the ropes, Glenn gets close to him and starts on a short overhand right just at the same time that Roy was shooting the uppercut. A definitely no no when you're landing the ropes. It's a shoot uppercut. But Roy has always broken a lot of the rules. I mean, when you say a definite no no, that's the kind of thing which has sometimes been an asset to Roy Jones because his physical skills have allowed him to do things that other fighters shouldn't try to do. Yeah, but right now it looks like his skills are slow just a little bit, and Johnson is fighting almost a perfect computer printout fight putting pressure on, and his most effective punch still seems to be that little short jab. And you heard Johnson's trainer, Orlando Cuellar, between rounds, who said, if you can keep up this pace, you've got this fight. Jones probably doesn't believe Johnson can keep up this pace. I seriously have doubts myself at this stage here. That I don't know if he can keep this pace up, but I agree. If he can keep this pace up, he's definitely going to be in the running for winning the decision. Well, also, if he's the aggressor throughout, there are bound to be some rounds that are very close it could help him get those rounds but you know it's going to go to roy or any rounds that's close he thinks <laughs> johnson does that in order to get a decision it would have to be a landslide logic tells you he's probably right he's conditioned by experience to expect that watching the way glenn johnson is fighting here you might find it impossible to believe that for instance, he lost four fights in a row. Jones may be hurt in it was hurt right hand. It was hurt by the right hand. And a left hook, and Jones shakes his head, which is almost always a surefire sign that the fighter is hurt and is trying to shake it off. Good double left hook by Jones. Good right hand body shot by Johnson. Misses a big right hand up there. Now Jones comes back with a right. One, two, three, four, five left. Right hand lands for Jones. Johnson goes to the body. Ray Jones has never been in a firefight like this. You know, he, he's a better puncher than Johnson, but you know, Johnson is just outworking him right now. Roy, Roy, Roy. And he's coming back at Glenn Johnson with serious firepower now. Johnson may be hurt. Nope, Johnson is not hurt. He's got yeah. some tremendous shots. And he's walking Roy right back down. When a fighter gets old who has been a great boxer, dominating with boxing, he slows down just enough to get into some serious... Exciting. Exciting <laughs> fights. Five of the most exciting rounds Roy Jones has ever experienced anywhere in his career. 
And the crowd is largely on its feet. Well, it's just Randall this is, Arena. This is, this is a good fight, and, and Roy Steele is very dangerous in this fight. Jones smiling and winking at his corner as he walks back. But early in the round, Glenn Johnson had some moments that made Roy Jones look very precarious. Give me something in the ring, a little front middle of the ring, something. Now, don't stay in the ropes all the time. Okay, don't give him all he wants. Okay? Okay, you can switch it up, but don't stay on the ropes all the time. Now, you're taking this hard right now, G. Nice and relaxed. We got this? Glenn, do we have this? I need you to stay tight, baby. I need you to stay tight just like you're doing. Work behind that jab. You got his ass. You got his number. All right, keep your hands going. Don't let him get off like that. Right here you see Glenn Johnson landing the right hand that Roy just didn't see. Just a case of just playing the numbers game. Glenn is doing so many punches. And now you see Roy coming back with his lightning fast combinations. There was a time when Roy Jones didn't get hit with those kinds of long punches. Through round five, CompuBox numbers find Glenn Johnson having landed 73 out of 281, Jones landing 57 out of 203. Johnson throwing more, landing more, leading on Harold Letterman's card. Interesting drama developing here in Memphis. minute of round six both fighters seem to be getting a bit of a rest but it's Johnson who calls the tune if he wants to come after Jones Jones won't get a rest this is the this type of a fight that Roy likes to fight now that Johnson's beginning to slow down a bit yeah but I, maybe it's Johnson just kind of taking a break you know it's pretty hard to maintain the pace that he has set for the entire fight I think both fighters wanted to take a minute off to begin round six, <laughs> and they did. They wanted a two-minute rest between rounds. The kind of willpower, the kind of concentration, the kind of devotion that it's going to take for Jones to beat a hungry opponent like Glenn Johnson. Does he still have it? I believe that Russia can pass a bit as a pull it out because he still seems to have mentally good focus. And he punches with still so much more accuracy and pinpoints power than Johnson does. You can almost sense a certain kind of confusion or maybe disappointment in the crowd because they were looking for Roy Jones to put on an old Roy Jones show. And suddenly he's in a real fight. Yes, it is. And no one expected this. This is supposed to have been a, a, a just big uh, outcome in a show fight for Roy, so to say. Maybe Memphis is going to become a sort of boxing graveyard of legends. There was a fellow named Tyson who got buried by Lennox Lewis here, June 8, 2002. He had a big rep. Crowd was here to see him, too. Johnson with a good one-two against the ropes. Ten seconds. Work get out of there. Now muscling Jones back into the corner. Five seconds. Jones hasn't done much offensively in round six. Watching from the crowd, Antonio Tarver kind of hoping for a third fight with Roy Jones, but so far, no evidence here that we're on the verge of heading toward Jones-Tarver three. There's a lot of work to be done before that fight could be set up. And the gentleman in the blue shirt there is the great Jerry West. Who manages, the general manages the professional basketball team here. Yep, the Memphis Grizzlies, who uh, emerged as a junior contender, a contender in, in training uh, for the Western Division crown last year. All right. 
All right, stay busy. Don't give him room. Stay on him. As soon as he hits you once, you answer right back. Halfway through. Scheduled for 12 rounds in Memphis. Roy Jones comeback fight after being knocked out by Antonio Tarver. Jabs through round six. Jones, five out of 49. Johnson, 26 out of 132. Another category in which Johnson is outnumbering Jones. Let's see if he's outnumbering him on Harold Letterman's scorecard. Okay, Jim. I tell you, Jim, if Roy Jones loved me as much as I loved him, we'd be married. But I got to tell you, when you win, you win, and when you lose, you lose. Five rounds to one, 59-55, Glenn Johnson. Clean punching, effective aggressiveness, taking him up on the ropes and beating him up. I have it four rounds to two. Either way, it's kind of difficult to fathom a scorecard that would have Jones in the lead, at least off what we've seen so far. But we are not working with globally recognized or experienced judges here. The judges are from Tennessee, Kentucky, and Mississippi. And the appearance of these kinds of judges at fights which take place at this level, pretty rare. Especially when you're one of the top female athletes in the world in Roy Jones, you figured you'd have some very good experienced officials in here. The world championship caliber <laughs> officials. So let's just hope that we get good decisions. If it does, they end up going to the decision tonight. more action. Now Jones steps in and puts a little left hook on the face of Glenn Johnson. Jones missing underneath with the left hook. Johnson's just basically biding his time now. Probably feels as though he's built a lead on the scorecards and waiting to see what Jones is going to try to do about it. is landing but Jones isn't throwing much and Johnson continues to hold the initiative. You know, yeah. I, I think a number of those punches are landing. Maybe not hard but they're unanswered. And the fact that Jones is, is landing the ropes too. That right hand landed on Jones' right. face. Step back, Step back. Run him up. Run him up. Well it's one thing to smile and show us that you weren't hurt by the punch but exactly what RJ is the plan for winning the fight. That's what's missing so far. Roy still has not been able to sustain a good a combination attack. That's another round where it would have been difficult to pick Jones as the winner. Tune to Inside the NFL every Wednesday night throughout the football season. Join hosts Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter for a mix of exclusive game highlights, in-depth features, analysis, and predictions. And don't miss Dan's conversation with quarterbacking legend Joe Namath next week on Inside the NFL. You'll be able to find some holes now. You know, you got your little breather that round. Got your little breather that round. Let's lay some hands on him this time. Let's lay some hands up that jab. All right? Don't let him get set. That's the only thing I'm telling you this round. Remember that. Don't let him get set. All right. All right, let's get that shit out of here. When Alton Merkerson says to Roy Jones, calmly lay some hands on him, that is an urgent call to get going. He's observing yes. the obvious. Jones, according to CompuBox, threw 15 punches in the seventh round. Johnson threw 45. So there are seven rounds in the book. Maybe Glenn Johnson's won five of them. Maybe he's won six of them. Either way, logic tells you Roy Jones needs a rally or a knockout going down the stretch. Yeah, and I think he's going to pretty much realize that as the fight goes on. Because he, when? Hasn't, he hasn't been able to put combinations together. He threw one flashy punch at a time, maybe to get the attention of the crowd. But he really can't put three, four, or five shots together on Johnson. 
Well, and Johnson is also jabbing with him. And it's the most Roy, effective Roy, punch, a short know, jab, Roy, yeah. Roy, Roy never depended on or had a great jab. I mean, one of the unusual aspects of him was he had these remarkable reflexes in which he was a boxer who didn't jab. But what is happening, Johnson is getting closer to it, the distance that he chooses jab, and Roy don't have time to time it. And, and you he's, wonder. He's not used to guys fighting this close. Roy Jones expect to win the fight, fighting at a pace which seems to tell us that he's more interested in avoiding the action than in being a part of it. Well, I think he's dependent on the fact that he can knock out Johnson as Johnson gets tired going down the stretch. I really believe he thinks he can knock him out. That's a little bit of a high wire act at this point. Johnson isn't an easy man to knock out. Especially in view of the fact that, as you reminded me of the beginning, Larry, that he has to knock out that many people in the light heavyweight division in later rounds. Watch your head! See those punches are so Jones short hasn't yet. had a knockout since February 24, 2001. Now excuse me, he knocked out Clinton Woods in the sixth round to TKO in Portland in 2002. But it's been two years since Jones's last knockout. He went the distance with Ruiz and Tarver before being knocked out by Tarver. He's just getting out hustled, outworked at close quarters. Something we've never seen him in this kind of fight. And we have to simply attribute it to the fact that he's a 35-year-old athlete who's always depended on his extraordinary reflexes to win. And I think also the fights with Tarv has given all of his opponents much more confidence now. That's the point. He's not getting treated with the kind of respect that he has commanded throughout his career. Johnson's not here to give him that kind of respect. Yeah. So far, this is Hurricane Glenn Johnson landing on him. Yeah, Roy's being more aggressive now. Trying to move forward. And that's another round that would have been difficult to score in the favor of Roy Jones. And the crowd is beginning to boo because they came here expecting to see Jones win. And Antonio Tarver's on the cell phone saying, what do I do if Jones isn't available for me to fight? Maybe he's talking to Bernard Hopkins. You got four more rounds. I don't rule it out. Four more rounds. Okay. All right. Have fun, baby. This is your title, baby. This is your show. He's looking for the left uppercut or left hook to the body. That's what he's looking for. Watch that left hand. Jab to that left shoulder when he's trying to set. All right, here we go. There was a time when Roy Jones didn't lose this many fights, this many rounds in six fights. In the last two rounds, by copy box count, Johnson has outlanded Jones 36 to 12. Jones, in rounds seven and eight combined, threw a total of 40 punches. This is no way to win a decision. I think you're going to see Roy at this round. I think panic is setting in. Now you're going to see him do whatever he wants to do or has to do. He's going to start doing it this round right now. I think he really realizes that he's getting in jeopardy of losing the fight. Before, well, he, before he, he felt it was okay. Well, he, was, he turned it up against. He a takes right a right hand, hand and a left hand, and he's on the canvas again for the second time in two fights. And for the second time in two fights, he's not going to get up, and he's been knocked out again. Will we ever see Roy Jones nope. in the ring again? Not the one we are used to seeing because we didn't see him tonight. We saw the guy who got knocked out by Tarver getting knocked out by Glenn Johnson. And he is still out on the canvas and hurt badly. In our meeting yesterday, Roy Jones made it clear that he didn't think Tarver's knockout of him suggested he had deteriorated as a fighter. Quote, it could happen to anybody. It could have happened earlier in my career. Fact is, he's not the same fighter. He has not moved. He's still laying in the same position he had before. 
And that could be the product of his having hit his head on the canvas yes, when he went down unconscious from the second of the two punches that Johnson landed. Frankly, it was a one-sided fight which ended in a knockout victory for the guy who had dominated it from the opening bell. Now Jones begins to talk, but there's concern as he lies on the canvas, still motionless. And Emmanuel Stewart, you said it in the first round, Glenn Johnson isn't that big a puncher. For no, Glenn Johnson, no, no. who's not that big a puncher, to have done this damage to Roy Jones tells us, A, that Jones got hit way too many times. Well, let's just get back to the numbers game. You know, he just, you know, Johnson was permitted to throw so many punches, and even if you have a low percentage, you sooner or later got to start landing. And he let him throw too many punches. But uh, this was a round I figured Roy was going to come out and let it all hang out, and he gets knocked out himself. You may never have dreamed that you would see Oscar De La Hoya and Roy, Roy Jones, the two leading lights of their generation in boxing, getting knocked out in successive weekends. But that's the kind of sport we've got. This is the first time in his career that Glenn Johnson has ever knocked out an opponent past the sixth round. Glenn Johnson's a guy who's lost nine fights in his career. Well, all praises have to be given to Glenn Johnson. He did an unbelievable job, especially considering the whole crowd, the atmosphere, everything. He was so pro-Roy Jones Jr. He yeah, came. and this is the third loss of Jones' career, second consecutive knockout loss. And I have to wonder, how much money is in Jones Tarver now? How about Glenn Johnson versus Antonio Tarver? Well, it would be very interesting. It makes a lot more sense. It would be very interesting. I, I really don't think it was going to fight much beyond this year. Antonio Tarver just watched a few million go out the window. And we're going to take a look back at the knockout so you can see the devastating one-two combination which knocked Roy Jones out. Right hand, crunch. Now the left hook. And it was really the right hand the right that did hand. the damage. The left hook was just a push on the shoulder to get him to go down. The right hand had already knocked him cold. And his head hit the canvas very hard. That's so. right. And the head bounced twice against the canvas. And there's your winner. A nicer guy you'll never meet in our sport. 35 years old. Graduate of Coral Gables High School in Miami, left Jamaica when he was nine, an American citizen who loves the United States, but loves Jamaica as well. A guy who's always been cast as the other guy. Now he's the guy, as Michael Buffer is about to tell you. Here in Memphis, Tennessee, the end comes at 48 seconds of round number nine. The winner by knockout, victory, and still the IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, Glenn the Road Warrior Johnson. And this big crowd in Memphis, which came to root for Roy Jones, is applauding Glenn Johnson. And here are the numbers on what was a landslide. Johnson outlanding Jones by 43 punches, throwing 167 more, landing at the same percentage, landing down the stretch, the harder blows. Roy Jones has never used his jab all that much, so these numbers, fairly predictable. Roy Jones has been good at shutting off other people's jabs. He didn't do all that good a job of shutting down Glenn Johnson. No, because Glenn Johnson got very close to him before he jabbed, and Roy didn't have time to get away from the jabs. He usually likes to keep a big distance. Larry Merchant is standing by with Glenn Johnson. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Glenn. What was your plan coming into this fight? Did you think, based on his being knocked out in the last fight, that he might be a little gun-shy? No, um... I didn't know if he was going to be gun shy or not, because each each man 
respond differently to a knockout. So, you know, it's a matter of opinion if you're going to be shy or not. My game plan was come in and beat him at all costs. If it come to the decision, beat him at that. Make sure you, you do enough work through each round. Make sure you throw enough punches through each round. And if the knockout come, take it. That's my game plan all along. You stayed in his chest. Was the, was the idea of that to not give him a chance to use his speed from outside? Well, you know, the, the, a lot of guys who fight Roy, they stay just outside his punch and let him jump in with single shots. And he fast with that one single shot. Sometimes he run off two and he jump back out, slide out to the side. I decided that I wasn't going to let him jump in. I was going to stay in, in place where if he throw that punch, I have an opportunity to throw a punch as well. You know what I mean? So, so stay close, close enough where either he's going to throw the punches faster than me, better than me and knock me out, or I have an opportunity to do the same. Were you a little over anxious in the first round the way you launched into him or did you want to send him a message i just wanted to send a message that hey i'm here to fight so unless you're ready to fight you're going to have a long night did he ever hurt you no he never hurt me i mean you're not known as a knockout puncher why did you knock him out well I change a lot of things since people seen me last. You know what I mean? That's why they don't know. I've been fighting overseas. Me, my trainer, Orlando Cuero, and I, we've been working on a lot of different things. My manager, been working the phones, trying to get me the right fights. My promoter, been doing the same thing, trying to get me the right fights. Could you feel him weakening as the fight went along? I, a matter of fact, I was just touching him anywhere I could. Touch him to the body, touch him to the head. And, I'm, and, and I was, I know, I know from being a boxer, those punches going to weaken you. Doesn't matter what kind of mechanic you have. Let's take a look at the knockout and you describe what happened. Well, right there, I was just stepping to him. I said, let me throw a jab. And I didn't see him respond. So I said, ready, right on that. And there it was. I looked for him for the left hook. And I barely tapped him there. And I, wa I wanted to come with another punch, but he wasn't there. So I just step around him and just keep moving out the way so the referee can do his job. Were you surprised at all that he wasn't as quick as we normally would see him in his prime, that you, he was easy for you to hit? Well, I, I, my speed was offsetting his speed. He and I the same age. You know what I mean? I'm, oh, I'm the older man in the ring by a few days. So I, I don't see why he wouldn't have his speed. I have mine. <laughs> Would you now like to fight Antonio Tarver instead of Roy Jones? I'll fight any man, any man in the world. I'm not the best. I'm just the guy you're willing to fight the best. And all who say they're the best and claim the best and the media say they're the best. I'm here to fight them all. I'm not ducking or hiding from no man. Thank you very much and congratulations thank, thank, on an outstanding thank fight. Thank you, Larry. You're great. Jim, HBO, have me back. Bring what me back. a great line. I'm not the best. I'm just a guy who's willing to fight the best. Emmanuel Stewart. A week ago, when Oscar De La is knocked out by Bernard Hopkins, I saw a poll which asked, should Oscar De La Hoya retire from the ring? And 73% of the respondents said yes, and I thought, that's wrong. There's nothing in the hopkins De La Hoya fight that tells me that Oscar De La Hoya needs to leave the sport. If somebody asked me tonight, should Roy Jones retire, my answer is yes, absolutely. What I do you think? I think Roy Jones' answer would be yes, too. I mean, two devastating knockouts. I mean, they were really knockouts. I don't mean referee stopping fights. Uh, just in especially fights that he was supposed to win. I uh, I don't think Roy has no other choice but to retire. He may fight again, but he's been great for boxing, and I'm a big Roy Jones fan. I mean, he's given us thrills from 88 from the Olympics all the way up here. So we've had about, what is that, about 14 years of excitement for Roy Jones, but I think it's ended tonight. And regardless of how much damage the two knockouts have done and what they show about his ability to take a punch or not take a punch at this point, I didn't see the desire. I didn't see the will. I didn't see anything in Roy in this fight that told me that he had had a desperate need to win the fight. I think a lot is to be given credit to Glenn, Glenn. Johnson. Because Johnson came out and kept pressure on him right away. I thought starting the second round, he fought the perfect foul. He never let Roy get his momentum to go on. He got closer to Roy than Roy likes to be, wasn't comfortable, and kept hitting him with short punches. And every time Roy would have one of those good volleys exchanged, he would come right back. He would never let him get the crowd into the fight. And I thought he fought a very smart fight, especially considering his normal skills. But he fought a great fight. He's a champion. That's right. Glenn Johnson with a tremendous performance. Ninth round knockout of Delaware last week by Hopkins. Ninth round knockout of Jones tonight by Glenn Johnson. We're still hoping that Larry Merchant is going to be able to, to get an interview with Roy Jones. And so far, this is not happening as Jones is talking with Alton Merkerson. Oh, no. Larry's going to talk to trainer Alton Merkerson. So let's go to Larry in the ring right away.
Thank you, Jim. According to uh, the word we're getting is, is that Roy Jones does have a concussion, which is to be expected after a vicious fight like that. I'm with Alton Murkison, his trainer. How badly hurt is he, Alton? Well, the doctors want to be very cautious right now because he did hit the back of the head, did hit the mat once he went down, and they have uh, categorized it as a concussion. You've been hinting for the last year or so that Roy Jones is not the Roy Jones of old. Should he continue to fight? You know, that's something him and I are going to have to talk about. He's, uh, not doing a self-evaluation. You know, when you've done something for so long and uh, it's not fun to you anymore and it's, it, it's total work for you, and, uh, you have to sit down and look at the situation and see if you really want to do it. Uh, his training hasn't changed. He's trained very hard. You know, he's getting older, 35 years old. He's been boxing for 25 years, which is no excuse. Uh, he was on the night he got caught with a shot. He's just getting hit more now than he used to get hit. Were you alarmed at how much punishment he was taking as the fight progressed? Well, I, I really saw uh, a lot of that in the first round. The guy got some shots in because uh, Johnson came in just whirlwind and, and Roy was on the road. But after that, you know, he got hit sometime, but it wasn't real big shots. But, uh, you know, he just he, he just he just getting a little, hit a little more than he used to. Thank you very much, Alton. Yeah. Appreciate it. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Larry. We talked about inexperienced judges scoring this big fight. The good news is they were headed in the right direction. Uh, Judge Dan McClellan had it 77-75 Johnson. Judge Fred Steinwinder had it 77-75 Johnson. Judge Gerald Deming, 78-74 Johnson. All of them giving a little bit more benefit to Roy Jones than was the case for our scorer, Harold Letterman, but all of them, on the other hand, with the right leader headed down the stretch of the fight. Earlier tonight, we invited all of you to log on to HBO.com slash boxing and vote on the question of whom Bernard Hopkins should fight next. 28% of you said Antonio Tarver. The 37% who said Roy Jones might be rethinking that now. Felix Sturm only got 6% of the votes. The Trinidad Mayarga winner, 21%, and that could be the logical choice for Hopkins if the Trinidad Mayarga winner is willing to fight him. And only 8% of you thought that he should write, uh, fight the winner of Wright Mosley, too. A little bit later on this fall, the name that wasn't on the list, young American middleweight Jermaine Taylor, maybe he's a choice to fight Bernard Hopkins at least not too far into the distant future as some in the sport believe he's ready to face Hopkins right now. And there's Roy Jones in the ring, still recovering from the damage of the knockout that was applied to him by Glenn Johnson. Let's bring in Larry Merchant for his closing comments right now before we set up Trinidad Mayargo one more time. Larry, um, I thought that Roy Jones looked vulnerable throughout the fight. When it happened, it happened suddenly. Your thoughts? Jim, I was thinking during the fight, the fact that there wasn't a single member of the national media who came to cover this fight after Roy Jones was knocked out by Tarver. There was a bit of a kind of uh, what the Germans call schadenfreude, which is uh, the pleasure at the misery <laughs> of others. And because Roy Jones over the years has been a, a kind of arrogant prima donna at times, not a few people were uh, happy at the fact that he got knocked out by uh, Antonio Tarver, although everybody was looking forward to seeing them fight a third time. Tonight is something else. Tonight is uh, the death of a king. This is not pleasure at somebody's misery. This is almost like uh, the farewell to a great fighter. Because this is what happens eventually to right. most, if not all, great fighters. Two more great fighters going to be in the ring October 2. Let's take a look at our next big pay-per-view show coming up next weekend on HBO Pay-Per-View. The relentlessness of Felix Trinidad coming and coming, firing with both hands. If you want to see street fighting, you are a Ricardo Mayorga fan. Next Saturday night, two of boxing's most exciting performers face off in what promises to be one of the most explosive encounters of the year. Power shot, power shot, power shot. 
Puerto Rican superstar Felix Trinidad built his boxing legacy by conquering some of the biggest names in the sport. The pride of Puerto Rico stands on top of the boxing world. Now at age 31, the future Hall of Famer returns to the ring after a 29-month retirement with a renewed desire to reclaim his once lofty perch. Sensational performance by the greatest finisher in the sport. I'm going to win and prove that I'm still the best and that Tito's going to be around for a while. Standing in his way, one of the most dangerous fighters in the sport. I want Tito to know I'm going to slug him with his fist hard on his head. Nicaraguan wildman Ricardo Mayorga's brash, unbridled style shot him straight to the top of the welterweight division. And Ricardo Mayorga has done it! Now Mayorga takes his brand of barely controlled violence 13 pounds north against a fighter once regarded as the most fearsome puncher in the sport. I'm going to invite him to hit me with his best hook, and after that, I'm going to knock him out. I'll be waiting there for him to come and throw everything he's got. Toe to toe, mano a mano. This is the kind of showdown fight fans crave. I'm going to knock him out in eight rounds. I'm going to retire him again. Mayorga said he's going to knock me out in eight rounds. I'm going to show him. He's going to have to eat his words. It's next Saturday night, pay-per-view from Madison Square Garden in New York. Felix Trinidad against Ricardo Mayorga. Should be a lively crowd in the arena. A lively crowd we expect for you at home as you get ready to watch another huge boxing event. Meanwhile, here in Memphis, Glenn Johnson in his dressing room celebrates his knockout victory of Roy Jones. A ninth round KO on a thunderous right cross and this is Roy Jones, still on the canvas in the ring, still being treated there by his cornermen and by doctors who are asking Jones to go to a hospital. He says he doesn't want to go. We know what has happened to knockout victims in the past. Roy, go to the hospital. It's a very good idea. We'll have a final word on what happened here in the boxing.